Hey everyone, it's Alex and welcome to this Warcraft Rumble guide where I'm going to be taking you through the fundamentals of Warcraft Rumble, showcasing some gameplay and giving you some insight into my experience with this game. Thank you so much to Blizzard Entertainment and the Warcraft Rumble team for sponsoring this video. I tend to really appreciate the PvE side and I've been having a ton of fun collecting sigils through the, uh, the map, working towards the newly created raids. I got to get 90 sigils and I'm at 46 so I got Got some aspirational content to look forward to uh, on that note here we also have dungeons which we can run later and dungeons give you the opportunity to get army upgrades but most importantly for those that uh, might be coming from various different deck builders you can actually deck build in this game you collect minis they're called and they're all iconic warcraft characters and i mean these are i mean I used to play a ton of World of Warcraft, so they really come to uh, to memory for me. And of course, my days as a Warcraft 3 Reign of Chaos and Frozen Throne player. Oh man, I remember playing some custom games, Footy Wars and stuff like that. So a lot of really iconic characters here that I'm sure you're going to know and love. The deck that I've been playing in particular is one featuring Hogger. It's like the zoo style deck. Every single time you play Hogger, he actually uh, he comes back into battle faster and stronger. And uh, that's his leader ability. Each leader has a unique ability. And I have an unlocked talent, meaning that he actually gets... 10% max health each time he's played as well. So you just want to get Hogger in, you want to cycle him in as often as you can. And so I'm using a lot of different uh, kind of uh, units that take advantage of being zooed out, right? We got some, uh, you know, aerial units, we have some AOE ranged units, and I have these spiders, which I really like. Uh, they actually have a frostbite talent as well. As you build a collection, you actually get bonuses towards all these different elements in the game just by building your collection out. So when I get a new unit, I get a whole bunch of extra experience for it and etc. And I really do appreciate this system because it makes worth collecting things. Uh, it just makes it worth it. It makes it fun, right? Uh, you got obviously a little store which provides a lot of value stuff. Uh, you do get the opportunity to uh, every day and a couple times a day sometimes to actually log in and get some rewards. And what you'll notice here is I'm actually going to upgrade the, uh, the, the common dark iron miner. And what's gonna happen here is you're gonna notice I built a collection because he leveled up. I took him from nine to 10 and I got a collection level because of that. We do have PVP in this game as well. Um, now, if you want to go into the PVP season, that's absolutely great, that's up to you. Uh, it is a lot of fun. I have kind of dabbled in it, but for me, I really like the PVE experience. I'm really pushing towards those raid experiences as well. You also have quests, which gives you major bonuses towards uh, a hero or a, a unit of your choosing. Uh, we can actually do this, right? We got the Drake. Let's play the Drake quest here. We're going to get a ton of bonus experience. And you notice that green arrow. That green arrow indicates that once this quest is complete, we're actually going to upgrade that particular unit here. So we get a little intro into the map, get an idea of what's going on here. And it's a five times bonus quest. So let's get it, right? We have a little uh, kind of a gold vein here, and we're going to throw our little guy to go get that gold vein. I like to wait a little bit and then just kind of really send out a bunch of guys. Now, the harpies, the aerial unit, they're really weak, but when they get on top of something, they absolutely shred it. This little wolf, he does like this, uh, this like charge attack. I really want to take this here, and we're actually kind of going in there. Here's the issue though, they're making progress and this gargoyle is gonna absolutely destroy our tower. So we're gonna have to set up some defense while we do some pushing and apparently we ran right by our tower there. But this gargoyle has to die or we're in trouble here. Um, I'm actually gonna send out Hogger again. Once again, this deck, the deck that I designed, is all about getting Hogger out as often as possible because even if he dies, What's going to happen is, is he's going to respawn stronger than ever. So he does feed down there. He does some damage to the boss. Uh, we should take this now. Come on. Come on, guys. we got to take that. Um, I really do like this ranged uh, flamethrower AoE. I really should memorize the names. Uh, this is a griffin. I know that. All right. And, of course, the uh, the miner helps to, to get... Oh, we actually just took that one in. The nice thing here is that we have Hogger. We actually got this forward spawning point, which is great. So now we can ho uh, spawn Hogger. You'll notice he's actually faster than where he started because of the upgrades he's experiencing as someone who's getting spawned into the map over and over again. And once again, we have this forward spawn point. So we're going to send out as many damage causing units as we can. We have a definite advantage here. We're going to be right on top of the boss momentarily. I'm going to send, I don't need to send him. I will send him to get that gold there. It looks like Hogger is doing enough AoE damage that we're going to become victorious in this particular match. Okay, nice, smooth. Nice and smooth through the camera here. 
A little bit of combat experience for the Griffin Rider, and we get to claim our bonus experience for our Drake, which is actually a phenomenal unit. Level up the Drake. Nice, it gets stronger, and what do you know? We're also gonna get a collection point as well. Um, oh, and we also have some, uh, let's see, there's so much happening here. We also are completing quests uh, towards these bounties. So you got like these dailies and weeklies you can do. And here we're gonna claim our reward. And these are kind of rewards that you get to claim on a daily basis. We're setting at midnight Eastern for me. And uh, we're gonna upgrade this once again, that green arrow indicating an upgrade. Okay, we upgrade that. We're gonna upgrade, uh, this is a hero, but I actually play the harpies a lot. So I wanna upgrade those harpies. That's actually two upgrades, absolutely massive. I will take that, thank you very much. And uh, we'll go with the hero unit here. That is a torrent. It's uh, Karen Bloodhoof. All right, thank you so much. So we're going to get a bunch of points here, and uh, we'll do the uh, Grumash Hellscream as well. Nice. A lot of upgrades happening. This is way more than I expected, to be honest with you. Maybe I should have paid more attention to how many we were getting to go, but this is a lot. I'm getting a lot of rewards here. This, this is actually abnormally high. And as you can see, we gained six collection level so we actually increase that quite significantly that's awesome but i really like these uh these events here and so we go to them here and it's the uh like they're surging kind of locations and you get all these rewards and it has like this unique kind of uh mechanic to it so in this case passive gold income is increased to 300 percent and that's great. And we're gonna get a whole bunch of extra gold, which we can then use to upgrade our minis. So let's go. And this is notable that all throughout the week, there's constant surging locations and they kind of rotate in and out. There's always something to play, uh, which I really like. Honestly, my experience with this game has been very positive. Um, you know, it's uh, it's absolutely free to download. And uh, I, I feel like it's, it's pretty free to play friendly from a, uh, a PVE perspective, which is what I've primar primarily been playing it as. Um, you know, and uh, ultimately, now I'm thinking here. I think about the strategy. I'm trying to get my hogger to take down that uh, that area there, but they are absolutely zooming in here. I got to do something about it. Hold on, let me get the okay, perfect. So I get chain lightning, take out some AOE, and now we have hogger coming in on the other side here. Now hogger can't attack air units. We give a little bit of support, and we did not actually push that on the other side there. Uh, we're I, I got to throw my units out faster. We got all this extra gold i almost forgot for a second that we have all this extra gold our opponent's using it i'm not okay we gotta do we chain lightning here i don't know uh oh they used uh they used a lot of AOE there all right i gotta get rid of these come on come on my apm is too low i've not played starcraft in years I need to practice my apm we're gonna get hogger out here whenever possible keep cycling i mean this this type of uh map should be beneficial to us or this type of challenge because Hogger just wants to get rotated in. And so we got all this extra gold, and we can just keep throwing out there. We got an advanced spawn point here, we'll take it. Oh my gosh. I misplayed slightly, <laughs> I let go of it too early. Uh, okay, we'll get those extra gold uh, chunks there. Okay, we got, oh, by the way, you can change these to change the direction your minis actually approach the map from. Okay, let's put some pressure on the left side. I think we're on top of the boss though. We are, look at that Hogger. Just absolutely doing damage. Okay, let's let's support Hogger over here. He's a he's a Chad. Look at that, just smacking those chickens. Chickens didn't even stand a chance. Like just ignoring everyone. Oh, he's taking a lot of damage action from that Drake. Um, but uh, oh, we're on top of this parrot now. I think it's more of a vulture, but let's call him a parrot. Let's just say I'm ignoring my base, and we got him. Nice. Okay. And um, I, I just, I don't know. I really like these surging locations. They generate a lot of income for you, which you can use to then upgrade your uh, your minis, which make your ability to gain the sigils uh, obviously better. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. I, I really like the game. Oh, and that reminds me, as you complete these as well, there's another key element, and that is your experience with your guild. There's some social elements as well. Uh, so I got a guild here, and um, look, as you actually kind of uh, go through those surging locations, do PvP, as a guild, depending on where your uh, your hero, like which faction your hero is, you start to unlock various rewards. I'll actually show you the dungeon mode as well. You get to pick a relic that gives you like an ability that you get to take forward here. So minis leave behind a heart of fire, granting double damage on the next attack for Sally that touches it. Each gold that you mine heals your minis. And then we have the Broodling Whistle. Your leader summons two whelps. Let's do the leader summoning two whelps here. And uh, let's fight. We gotta go, to <laughs> we gotta take out a Murloc here. 
I don't mind it. Let's go. Um, and again, the thing I really like about this game is that I feel like there is a ton of content, especially now, right? It's been out for a while and uh, there's a tremendous amount of content. So what we're going to do here is we're going to put the gargoyle at the back more. Okay, we got our guys here, got the gargoyle at the back. And now this hero has the ability that all the flying units will get less expensive. So you kind of want to get, ah, we kind of give up that chest there, which is why we have that guy in. Uh, these heroes are pretty cool, the little dragon whelps, they kind of roll out, and they're like proximity mines. As soon as they notice someone's there, they pop up and start doing tremendous amounts of damage. These murlocs on the top, they're not going to stand a chance against our flying fortresses here. Uh, this hero is, I, I, for the life of me, I can't remember his name, so embarrassed. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's actually a lot of fun. I, yeah, of course, he drops to the ground as well and becomes a melee unit as well uh, while you're while like you're kind of still trying to make a push here. These gargoyles do tremendous damage. They're heavily armored and uh, they just crush. Oh, and these little uh, these little whelps, they can be played anywhere, right? And I, I like how like the different heroes really provide you with an opportunity to play the game very differently. Like this, this is all about min-maxing your, your flying units, right? Um, obviously when they're discounted, that's, oh, I'm taking damage on there, but I think we're going to take out their Murloc first, and we do, uh, I mean, what can I say? But anyways, guys, I wanted this to be a fun little look into Warcraft Rumble. Um, I feel like I could play this game for hours. Whether or not you'd watch a video that's four hours long is a whole other conversation. But honestly, I, I really do really uh, enjoy playing this game a lot. And it's absolutely free to download. There's a link in the description down below and in the pinned comments. It's available on iOS. It's available on Android. Once again, it is absolutely free. And um, it's, I don't know. I'm a huge Warcraft fan, so I could not help myself when Warcraft Rumble released. I couldn't help but play it. I had to play it. And I feel like there's constantly rewards and new updates and just fun things to do in this game. So thank you so much for watching. As I said, I definitely invite you to use the link down below to get started with Warcraft Rumble today. Thank you once again to Warcraft Rumble for sponsoring this video. And I'll see you on our next video.